Hello everybody, my name is Carol. Welcome to my channel, So Carol. Today you're tuning in for the results of the Fabric Wheel of Fate when it landed on this beautiful butterfly type fabric. I have made something I am so thrilled about, very different for me, really, really excited to show you. Now, if you didn't uh, catch the last Fabric Wheel of Fate, I'll of course put the uh, playlist at the end of this video. But when I spun the wheel, it landed on this wonderful fabric here, which is this fabric. Now, that was just perfect for spring. Obviously, going into spring now, it's got butterflies, dragonflies, um, it's just got some beautiful sorbet colours, like a pink and a purple. Just They actually just look like splashes of paint, don't they? Literally where you've got a paintbrush when you were a child and you just used to splash it on the paper. Uh, that's what it looks like. Anyway, I had this fabric and I, I was a bit unsure. I had a pattern in mind for one of the results of these um, and I really was desperate to make it up, but I didn't know if it would work with this pattern fabric. But I was brave, I went ahead and I sewed it up. So what pattern am I talking about? About a month ago, I saw a review on a YouTube channel and I can't remember where, but it was this one, the Mile End Sweater by Closet Call Patterns. I have never used a Closet Call pattern before, um, but as you can see, I got the physical copy of it. One thing that I was really pleased at is because they have tissue paper. It's not like a PDF. Now, if you know my channel, you know that I am not a massive fan of printed off PDFs because I hate all that paper, that hard paper. Um, I like the big four with their tissue and I was really pleased to see that that contained it. So anyway, what drew me, I didn't want the hoodie version. I wanted this version with this tie at the bottom. There was something about that that I absolutely loved. Now, if you have a look at the line drawings on this, you can see that obviously the idea is that you color block it. You've got a separate yoke at the back. You've got um, the back piece kind of wrap runs to the front. So these aren't sort of extra triangles that's sewn in. They kind of come to the front and the front is very different shape. There are so many options for color blocking. And actually, if you look online, you can see all the different um, um, results that people have done. So I wasn't sure if this would, this would lend itself very well, but I decided to go ahead and give it a go. Now, obviously I sew big four all the time. I do the occasional indie, as I said before. So for me, every time I face a new pattern company, it's deciding what size to go for. For this one, I decided to, as it was quite oversized, I'm gonna err on the side of caution. I don't want it too big. So I went to a size four, which was a 33 inch bust. Now actually I'm about a 35. So I thought that's fine, it's oversized, it should be okay. And the last thing I was some ginormous balloony type um, sweatshirt. So this actually was a French terry and I think I got it from my fabrics in Germany. Just a very light, soft um, French terry. Making up. I had no problems at all with the instructions. I thought they were really good. There are a lot of it, they um, obviously catering for the beginner. There's a lot of written instructions in this book. And I probably said this before, but if I, if I've got a new pattern like this with lots of instructions that maybe don't, aren't relevant to the view that I'm doing, I will go through first of all and I will ring it, the ones I need, in a erasable um, pen, so a heat erasable pen. So therefore I don't get confused and start jiggering around everywhere. So that's what I did for here. Normally I would cross them out when I've done them, but I think I kind of got the gist of what I was doing when I was doing it. One thing that really intrigued me about this pattern is the sleeves had darts just on the elbow, on the front, they've got darts. Um, I've come across darts at the sleeve heads before and I've come across darts on a knee for trousers, but never come across darts because of the fabric, you can't actually see them. 
but you would see them if it was a plain sweatshirting fabric. The best bit about sewing this top was actually the bit I was waiting for at the bottom and this is a kind of channel that you create and then you feed through this tie and that is what really makes it for me. Now first of all I thought should I do some colour blocking? I was really unsure about it all being so floral so when I started off I actually had a neckband on there and a tie in a contrasting, I actually picked up one of the pinks from this, I had a bit of a jersey. So I, it did originally have a pink neckband and pink tie. I showed my husband, who is always perfectly honest with me, and he went, what on earth? He said, I like it, but what's with that pink thing sticking out either side and the, that was enough for me. I went back upstairs and I unpicked it all and I quickly made, um, got rid of that, made a new neckband and made a new tie. And I went back downstairs and he went, that is so much better. <laughs> now, my husband is no fashion expert. He's very kind with my makes, but he is very honest and that his reaction initially was enough for me to change it. So I'm gonna try it on for you now and I'm really pleased that I've done this video now because now I can wear it um, I just love it. So here it is. What do you think? I am so thrilled with it. The difference for me was I, I love the shaping of it. I love the fact that there's the sleeves are kind of off the shoulder. Um, obviously you've got the darts on the elbow which are in the right place but you can't really see them. You've got knitted cuffs. They're not particularly tight I will admit. Um, but it's this. I just, there's something about this I love. And obviously you can do it as tight as you wanted or I've kind of balanced it out either side. Honestly, I absolutely love this. You've got the neckline there, a neck, back neck yoke there, which obviously could be colour blocked. I did kind of play around with my cover stitch machine just on some of the seams, but you can't really see them. Um, I don't know if you can see that on the back. All I did was kind of, they kept saying in the book to top stitch the seams and I thought actually what I'll do is I'll run it through the cover stitch machine with the three straight stitches. I didn't reverse it so you've got kind of the zigzaggy. Um, I did three so you've got one in the centre and then one either side. Um, it's hard to describe really, I'll show you better in better detail. But you can't really see that, so that was almost like a waste of time. But oh, I love this. I'm of course wearing it with the um, my jeans I made, which are my Largo Cargo fakes, um, which I carpenter jeans, which I wear all the time. I literally, I think in most of my videos, I'm wearing them. But yeah, it's just such a lovely spring look. It's not too warm. As I say, this bit was so much fun. The uh, band around the bottom, I think I actually, again, now this is the same thing as I did um, a top a while ago, where the waistband was the same size as the back of the um, garment, so I just reduced it in a little bit, because I don't want it hanging out here, I like to pull it in. But you can see it angles up. Now the only thing I would say, I'm only five foot two, three-ish, this, actually is quite cropped isn't it now actually you kind of can see that on a lot of other people when i was going through instagram i could see that on a lot of people it was coming up quite short so i'm not sure how easy it would be i'm sure it would be easy enough but to just if you were a bit worried about it coming up too high um just to lower the front down a bit but i'm happy i just keep playing with these really <laughs> the only thing i would say it's got a tie on it and the channel's quite wide, so what I need to do actually is just secure that channel a little bit, just so I don't lose, because I am in danger of losing these ties inside. I can see me kind of, you know how you used to, um, what was it, like Western, you put your thumbs in the, the rings when you were doing uh, line dancing back in the 80s. I feel like I almost like just stand there holding these. <laughs> me being silly. Um, yeah, so there we go. Really, really happy with the fabric wheel again. 
So where are we now on my fabrics? I've got two left as you can see. Now this, this, I think I said right back in the beginning, these are not the true colours. I have this lovely interlock jersey that Adam from Adam Sews, very famous, very renowned uh, Adam Sews sent me. And this beautiful blue French terry that I've also got it in like an orangey colourway. I got the two colours from Echo B back ooh, a while ago now. Um, I think before Christmas. So I've still got this blue to use. So I've got two fabrics. So I've adapted the wheel this time round. Uh, I think when I spun it last time to get this fabric, I think I had about three false spins. So that's, doesn't that look boring <laughs> from, from all my choices in the beginning. Now I have to say, I've got two fabrics left and I'm not going to make them both up. I'm only going to make one up because this will be the last piece I have of this kind of makeup of fabric. Um, obviously going into spring and summer, I've now only got kind of jerseys and things like that. So I do want to keep a piece over till autumn. So I think last time I did my fabric wheel, I made up both pieces and got them all done last time. I'm not going to do this last time. This time, I'm going to keep one piece back. So, so it'll be the losing one will have to wait till the autumn to be sewn up, I think, unless a need suddenly arises. So here we go with the wheel. I will um, change to my phone and I will hold it above and we'll see which one I'm going to be making up next. So just in case uh, you weren't sure from these awful photos which was which, I've placed them either side. And let's give this a spin. This will be the final spin uh, for this series of Fabric Wheel of Fate. And we have, oh, just Adam's Fabric wins it by a whisker, probably about two millimetres. Adam's Fabric wins. Adam, your Fabric won. Um, so he sent me this completely out of the blue. Um, interlock jersey I was uh, told by him it's so soft um, I would say there's one meter and a half there I would say so what am I going to make with this because it's kind of interlock jersey it's not going to lend itself to kind of sweatshirty thing and I'm almost out of sweatshirty tops anyway or a it will make a very light weight hoodie perhaps it's I'm stretching it and it hasn't got great recovery so I'm gonna to have to be a little bit careful on that. I just love the colour of it though, lilac being my favourite colour. So um, yeah, this will be the last one I make up. The other blue, the lovely blue, is gonna to have to be put aside for autumn which is gonna be great actually having something in my supply. So I really hope you've enjoyed the Fabric Wheel of Fate series again. Obviously stay tuned and a um, couple of weeks I will be publishing the results of this. I hope you love this as much as I do. Um, now I can wear it, now it's spring. It's, just, it's bright and it's fun. And a lot of you always say to me, you really must wear more bright colours. <laughs> so here we go, here it is. Thank you for joining me. I do hope you've enjoyed this series. If you've missed a few, then obviously I said I'll put the playlist at the end. And feel free to join me on a Friday Sews, a hashtag Friday Sews, where we just chat about what we've been sewing um, during the week and what we might have been buying and our plans for the week ahead. Thank you again, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye for now.